No, it's extraordinary to, th to know that we actually have something like nearly two and a half million businesses operating in this country. And uh, most of those, of course, are small and medium-sized businesses, or what we call the SMEs, turning over mostly less than 10 million, in some cases certainly even less than half a million. And they account for about a third of the economy of Australia, uh, nowhere near as big as, of course, the big corporations, but they're probably the most vital part of our economy because that's where you find the creativity, the new industries, the new jobs, all the time. But it's not easy, uh, and we all know that. Um, I've certainly started my business small, and it stayed small for quite a long time out of the last 43 years. But one of the most fascinating things I've tried to do is to find out what separates the very good, fast-growing and successful businesses from those that aren't. And uh, after analysing perhaps the top 5,000 companies in Australia for at least 35 of those years, we came up with, with quite a, a number of very simple clues uh, for success. And I might just touch on a few of those because hopefully uh, it may be of interest to you and useful to you as well. Uh, the first one is probably the most obvious, but it's sticking to your knitting or tackling just one business at a time. Now, in a country like Australia, you have a choice of going into about 510 different industries, but if you pick just one of them and stay with it, you're more likely to be successful than if you go into too many of them. A bit like a successful marriage, I guess. It's hard enough to make one of them work. Don't try and make three or four of them work at the same time. Um, I think the second rule we found very important is to try and dominate something in the market in which you operate rather than being a me too or a follower. Uh, in other words, what is your uniqueness? What makes you different? And are you working on innovation all the time to keep that point of difference? Now that can be sometimes not only the way you, you sell your services or your products, but it can be to whom they, they're sold uh, and it can be uh, the customer service that goes with it, but uniqueness and innovation is absolutely critical. Another terribly important rule these days is not to own hard assets. In other words, we're not in the rental business, we're in the pro producing business. So I've never chosen to own my own land, my buildings. We don't own our equipment. Uh, we try not to even own our debtors. Well, that's pretty easy in our case because they pass a year in advance, that's mm -hmm. nice. But we don't all have that privilege. But not having hard assets on your balance sheet is so critical because it's really your intellectual property that does the work in to help you grow and to become profitable. Why have anything that's only going to give you the equivalent of a rent, you know, like 8 or 10% when we should be aiming for world's best practice these days, which is surprisingly about 25% return on your capital. And you think, woof, how do I get that? Well, the answer is you can, but you certainly don't want any hard assets on your balance sheet. You need to outsource all the things that somebody else can do for you to make your life simple in running the business you've set yourself up to do. But if I had to pick out another rule that I think is very, very critical in this new century, it would be organisational culture. Because we're finding that uh, people are not necessarily staying in the one business for very long. Uh, and that's particularly true of what we call the net generation, who are what you might even call a peripatetic group. They love going for a wander after every two or three years. So holding on to good people and getting more good ones uh, means you have to have the sort of organisational culture where people really do want to turn up on the doorstep every day with a smile on their face and be happy to be coming to work for you. And of course, perhaps one that can never be ever left out of business is leadership. Uh, we've been taught a lot about management and that's always critical. We have to manage, but by God, it's important to lead. In other words, where are we going? Why are we going in that direction? And how are we going to get there? And can we do it with the sort of leadership that we all really aspire to? So I can say to you, every success and good leading in the process. Thank you.